Hey guys, in this video I would like to talk about why no car has ever reached over 500 km per hour. Bugatti claimed when they created the Veyron that the 8 liter W16 quad turbocharged gasoline engine could develop up to 3000 horsepower. However, the Veyron had only up to 1000 and one and later on the Veyron Supersport had 1200 horsepower. In 2016 a new Bugatti model came out, the Chiron, which had 1500 horsepower. However, none of them can surpass 500 km per hour. Bugatti could have used a more powerful version of the engine, but to have a lot of power you need to cool the engine down and that's a serious problem for, for engineers. To create a large cooling system means that you need tons of radiators and you need large vents for the air intake. If you create large vents in the front of the car, you will increase the aerodynamic drag coefficient. And now as you can probably see, we have the aerodynamic drag coefficient for the Bugatti Chiron. We have 0.38 for the standard mode. 0.35 for the top speed mode and 0.59 when the air brake is on. If you think these aerodynamic drag coefficients are great, well, they're not. My Audi A3 from 2004 has a drag coefficient of 0.33, which is a little bit less than the Chiron in its top speed mode. Also, the latest model from Tesla, the Model 3, has a drag coefficient of 0.21 and that's because it doesn't have any air vents in the front of the car. Now, for what it is, the Bugatti Chiron has a great drag coefficient because it needs to suck a ton of air in order to cool down the powerful 1500 horsepower engine. So it's a huge challenge for engineers to come up with an engine version for the 8 liter W16 engine to have over 2000 horsepower so it, can, it could surpass 500 km per hour because cooling is a big issue, aerodynamic drag is a big issue and just then giving the future clients warranty is a big issue as well. To have more power you need more cooling, more cooling will result in having a worse aerodynamic drag coefficient which will require a lot more power to surpass higher speeds. So everything needs to be perfectly balanced. Now the question is, how much power do we actually need to surpass 500 km per hour or 310 miles per hour? That's the question. So I made these calculations over here regarding how much power do we actually need to surpass 500 km per hour or 310 miles per hour. We have here the aerodynamic drag force which has the following formula and the power required to go at 500 km per hour. And we also have the frontal area from the Bugatti Veyron. I haven't found any data from for the frontal area of the Chiron and doing the math I have come to the conclusion that we need 1621 horsepower just to uh, overcome the aerodynamic drag forces of a Bugatti Chiron which could go over 500 km per hour if they will ever make this possible. Also we have rolling resistance forces or the forces which act on the wheels, on the ground. We don't have just aerodynamic drag forces, we also have the wheels also are in contact with the ground so we have other uh, friction forces there as well and we need and we need 556 horsepower just to surpass that those friction forces from the ground, the rolling resistance forces. And to sum up, we need a total amount of power, we need 2177 horsepower if we would maintain the same characteristics from the Veyron and Chiron. A frontal area of 2.07 square meters, a drag coefficient of 0.35 and 
a total weight of 2000 kilograms. If we would have this, we would need this amount of power to surpass and I think we would need at least this amount of power to surpass 500 km per hour. In the rolling resistance um, area, I took this value 0.15 on dry asphalt, which is a lot bigger than driving at a normal speed, let's say 80 km per hour. Uh, as you may probably know, the rolling resistance forces exponentially increase at higher speeds. At 250 km per hour, uh, this coefficient for dry asphalt is around 0.06. So at 500 km per hour, I have approximated this value if, I don't know if it's correct, but it may be even bigger than that. So I think we need at least this amount of power to surpass 500 km per hour. So my, my question is, will we ever see this kind of engine on a future Bugatti, which will break the world record to go over 500 km per hour? I honestly don't think so that we would see any Bugatti model soon with these characteristics, because it's literally, it's almost impossible to cool down that engine properly. And it would be incredibly expensive and also too dangerous to test a car at 500 km per hour and I don't know where we can actually drive at that speed just maybe someone will do this just to prove the world that we could go beyond that speed but it's it's really difficult to achieve this maybe it will happen one day who knows so this is why no car has managed to reach over 500 km per hour or 310 miles per hour. There are lots of issues involving cooling, aerodynamic drag coefficient and weight. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. Thank you for watching as always. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.